Welcome to Life with AI, Unlocking Your Third Brain. In this short episode series, we'll unravel the profound ways AI is reshaping our lives. Dive in with me as we uncover tools and insights that empower you to elevate your health, intellect, and help you work with maximum efficiency. I'm your host, Richard Fala. Since ChatGPT and OpenAI announced the release of their custom GPTs, so you and I can build our own versions and recipes of AI, I've been flooded with questions on where and what people have been building. Are these apps going to be actually useful or just a bunch of garbage that we will not use, like the first breed of apps in the marketplace? And uh, finally, how can we build our own GPTs to provide enough value? This is the topic of today. So I will share with you the marketplace. That's a third party marketplace where people have been listing their stuff if these apps listed there are valuable or not. And finally, we will build together a custom GPT that's going to tap into our own data set and potentially some API calls. So let's dive right in. But before I do that, I would love to invite you to join our beta release for our AI studio called openbuild.ai. We've built a drag and drop interface so you can build your own AI powered recipes and automate your day-to-day tasks so you can work more efficiently. Again, it's openbuild.ai and I would love to get you on board for the beta release. So let's dive into today's topic. As usual, I'll switch to my screen and back to the camera so you can see exactly what I'm referring to here. Now, this is a third party application because OpenAI has not released their marketplace yet. So all the things that people have been building are completely private or internal. But as usual, developers are smart enough and they circulated in a lot of forums and reddits links to places where you can submit links to your own GPT. This is one that's notable and I thought, I know there are a few of them, gptsgarden.com. It's a very simple directory where you can search or filter by category. And below are some of the things that people have been submitting. All right, so you can see AI yearbook. You have Jolly Christmas, CS Anki Copilot, and even one that I submitted myself. It's actually called Gluten Free Checker where you can upload a picture of a product and it's going to tell you if it's gluten free or not. Oops, actually gluten right here. So the marketplace is easy. You can just get a link from your own GPT that you've built. So I'll give you an example here. Let's say I created one called sugar guard where I can analyze sugar and carbs and ingredients based on the label that people upload. I can go ahead and click on it and now I can grab the link from the top or of course I can go in and say copy link and then all I got to do go back to GPT or GPT's garden type in my email and drop in the link to it that's all I need to do to submit my GPT into that third party directory now mind you as soon as OpenAI launched their own marketplace. This particular directory might be useless unless they take it a different way, but at least you can start get to get visibility and links back to your GPT. I thought it would be nice if they could add a way to already rate those and give it some comment comments and feedback, but that feature is not available yet. Now I skimmed through a lot of these. And quite frankly, I was a little bit underwhelmed because most of them, all they are, are free prompts and, you know, just a character training into what these will do. A few of them connect to uh, private APIs. And I tried one right now. It's a um, website creator, just because I did one on that before. Let me see here, GPT website builder. So when I click it, it opens up again, a direct link to the GPT with preloaded prompts. And here I can go ahead and type in my prompt. Now, because I already tried to (laughs) do some things uh, prior, so I uh, 
don't waste time typing. I will go and add the information. So I said, um, you know, if I ask what is the main purpose of the website, it's going to give me some initial, I would say, you know, information request. And then I can request or give it details. So I said, I'm a web agency. I want a minimalistic design. I want content. I'm building wireframing for businesses, images, blah, blah, blah. Right. So I provided some very basic details. So this particular website builder is giving me a general sections. I could do this honestly without the use of the app by using the default prompt that GPT offers. The one that I used before generated a link to a third party. So they actually just took the code that OpenAI or ChatGPT creates. Here we go. It is creating that website for me. And I'm not affiliated with the builder of this. All I'm doing is trying to understand if these apps are providing value yet, or they're just general fluff. Now, previously the website looked like this because I have the link. So it's very basic HTML. There's not much to it. I could get to the same exact result by starting from a basic prompt and the default chat GPT engine. All right, so for me, I don't think this has solved the problem. There are some third party websites that I have covered in my last episode that you can actually build great looking websites by, you know, parsing a prompt directly. Uh, Framer is one of them, I believe. So as you can see, a lot of these apps on the surface, they look like they provide value. But once you start to use them, you realize you could have done the same thing directly from the prompt itself. And I'm not judging on every single one. Obviously, there are so many of them. But at the end of the day, we want those that are going to provide a, a specific source of data, something that we can use that otherwise ChatGPT will struggle with. And we're going to try to do that together, by the way. All right. So this is the first part is that the applications available out there seem to be you know, so far not as useful or as promising, but how can we change that? How can we build something together that's going to provide that value? So I will go back to my GPTs, explore. And I've experimented a little bit with few applications. For example, I tried the weather in my town app and Another one that I thought would be really useful is using the open food facts. So I thought about an application that goes into this directory of millions of products and it gives you a rating of the food. So food fact is an open source directory of hundreds of millions of products that grades food. This one, for example, is Nutella. It got a D that means it's pretty bad. This one is pretty healthy. It got a one. So I thought that would be a cool thing to do is to integrate that into chat GPT and they have an API. Now, the only issue with their API is their block chat GPT right now uh, from using it. But to give you an example of how this can be built. Now, of course, there are the prompts here, but under the configure, if I go down to my settings, all it needed is just the link to the details and then the URL to the actual um, API. Now, I don't want you to worry. This is not a technical session, but if you read some of the basic stuff and there are tons of videos that are teaching you how to use the coding aspect of, um, this engine. But all I did is I followed their format, which is this, the default URL is world.openfoodfacts.org. The call is API slash V2 slash product. And then this is going to be the variable that's going to be parsed. Now that would be a valuable um, GPT had it worked properly. The problem is the API itself has blocked non-human calls coming into the app. All right. So I did scan something. 
and I tried to call it, even though it's communicating properly with the API, it's blocking it at a specific point. All right, so this is an example of an app that you can build using a third-party API with a little bit of tweaks and testing that could provide value that's probably not going to be available right out of the box in chat GPT because they don't have access to all the data on openfact.org. Another way where you can use openfact.org, and this is just an example, is you can download their entire database and they provide access to it. Then you can format this database, which is huge, which is I think seven or eight gigs, in a way that it could be compressed and readable by ChatGPT itself. So there are ways around it. At this point, you might need some development capabilities and stuff. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to preach here is to think outside the box and to tap into third-party data like this that's available. That's kind of really going to be um, the way to make your GPTs valuable to the community. And that's just a simple prompt as we've seen in the directory before. All right, another way that you can do it, which does not require any coding really, is the ability for you to curate your own content based on your expertise and then upload that content directly. So it's very specific to the data set that you have. And when I say data set, let's just call it a PDF doc. All right, so we're gonna do one together here. I'm gonna call it create, um, you know, marketing trends for 2024. I already have a full on presentation that my team and I curated. We gathered all this awesome information of what the digital marketing trends will be for next year. I saved it as a PDF and now I will configure this to tap into the source PDF to answer the questions on marketing trends for 2024. All right, so while this is building, I'll switch to configure. I'm gonna go to upload files. This is the knowledge base. And I'm going to upload that PDF file. Okay, perfect. So you see now I'm, I'm providing some unique value that could be publicly facing, does not require any coding, and it could be helpful for the marketplace. Now you see here there are capabilities like web browsing, Dolly, and Code Interpreter. And for some reason, the actions interface used to have a little bit of a prompt. I don't know if they've updated this or what, but it was easier for me to just input things in fields. I didn't see that since yesterday. They might have taken it off and just provided some examples here and they're just working on updates, I guess. But that's not what I need. All I'm doing is a very simple interface. Oops, I exited. Okay, the file has gone, so please pardon me here. And let's continue creating. All right, let's continue. I think the next step is going to create like an icon for me. And these are the pre-trained prompts, which you can configure. All right, so ChatGPT has been acting up today and they couldn't even create the icon for me. So it skipped that for some reason, but it did create the actual predefined prompts. And you can see right here, the document is already attached. All right, so it generated something. It doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna use it. But now let's interact with the GPT itself. All right, let's say what is the top um, trend for actually right here. I want to make sure that it's pulling from my data set because I could ask it directly. It does not need my data set. Mine is very specific to I think the top 12. So now it's searching my knowledge base and you can see it's responding new email design trends, AI power chat support, so analyze the content of my document 
And this is actually exactly what we covered here. So if I go back to my presentation and what the trends are going to be, here we go. So the first one is new email designs, chat support and marketing assistance, AI power websites, etc., etc. So this actually just took all the content and from that proprietary stuff that we put together, it was able to give me back a response. So it's very basic. It's tapping into my own data set and it's ready to go providing value. All right, now, if you're asking about the actions, um, a lot of third-party apps are already starting to provide you with the out-of-the-box code to integrate. Most notably, you can use Zaps and they have webhooks where you can have webhooks created, a little bit more advanced, but nothing too scary. And you can have ChatGPT communicate with the webhook to send data and then send data back to ChatGPT. So they can create the schema, which means they will give you the code that you can import directly from a URL. So there's a lot to be done. And I've seen dozens of videos on YouTube that could teach you how to do that. This is not what this session was about. I just wanted to show you exactly what has been built, where people are submitting their stuff, if they're valuable. And if you would like to create your own version of GPT, just make sure one, you either have your own data source that you've put together and you worked worked on with your team or yourself. I'm pretty sure you have some sort of expertise and deep knowledge of your, of your industry that has an angle. ChatGPT might not be able to provide it. Or two is to connect multiple third-party apps together. So I gave you an example of using openfoodfacts.org, which is an open source library of grading food available to everybody. Maybe I could connect that with a shopping app, perhaps Amazon or others, and have people scan certain barcodes and then order them from Amazon or gift card, or send them as a gift through third-party gifting apps as well. So if you're able to connect APIs from different applications in that way, this is really going to be, in my opinion, so far, the apps are that are going to make an impact. Everything else that I've seen has been just very surface like apps and those that are providing some values are actually taking them from their plugins marketplace. And here's another thing that I wanted to share is that ChatGPT launched their assistant API. So you can think of the assistance API as a faster way to build apps on ChatGPT but it's so expensive, much more expensive than the usual, you know, hard code writing um, the data. If you would train it yourself and you would uh, just build it from scratch. And I'm speaking out of experience because we built in VBout our own plugin for ChatGPT. And then we tried to emulate it by building or using the Assistant API. And the Assistant API was a lot faster to build. However, the problem that it costs more. Um, don't ask me why, that's just the way that they did it. Um, so it's going to be your call if you wanna pay more and go to market faster with less know-how and development skills, or if you like to pay a developer who can build something a little bit deeper and use the traditional API in that sense. And not to mention the marketplace, it can make an impact. So. That's the Assistant API that was launched. Now, by the time you watch this video, some of the changes might have already happened and a lot of updates might have come up. But overall, as of today, a week after the release, you can see what people have been building. So get creative and I look forward to seeing what you're building in the near future. If you like the content of these episodes, please like or subscribe. I would love to understand if I'm making an impact and I would love to continue pushing awesome content like this, specifically around how AI is impacting and reshaping our lives. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next episode.